Alrighty, alrighty, welcome to Nexus Gaming Series Season 2, the very first match played between ODG and TMG Red. This is a Division A matchup, and I am super excited for this series. Joining me today, a new caster to the league, and we're excited to have a whole bunch of new faces like TMG Red here. We have Bludgeon. How are you doing today, Bludgeon? Hello, Mr. Seventh Ace. I'm super excited to be here casting for NGS. I think amateur leagues are really fun. I think casting is really fun. And I think this is going to be an interesting matchup between these two teams. Oh, absolutely. ODG on the left side here in blue is a returning team from last season. I believe they went out in the semifinals last season. Uh, did, had an excellent performance. Meanwhile, on the right side, though, we have... A, a new team, this is TMG Red, and I'm excited to see what they can bring to the table here for Nexus Gaming Series. Yeah, that's right. I was talking to members from both teams earlier. TMG Red is a team that formed extremely recently, um, and so short-term goals for them are basically finding their footing, figuring out their teamwork, um, figuring out what they need to work on for the future. However, this is a team that does have ambitions. They're looking to make top eight or top 10 in the HTC Open for next season. Um, so we'll see how they get started today. Meanwhile, over on ODG, although they are a returning team, they have also mixed things up a bit. They've got a couple of roster swaps. Um, new to this team today, I believe, are Sormir and Kat. Um, and the rest of the members have also switched positions a little bit. So we'll see how they make out in their first match with the new lineup. Yeah, I'm excited to see how the changes for ODG work for their team. Uh, 2 plus 2 and... Uh, I think it's 2 plus 2 and TT Esports were so dominant last season in Division A. That they really ran away with the league, and I want to see... Uh, from both these teams, some nice competition against those top teams. And that HGC Open uh, goal, that is a lofty goal indeed. That is going to be excellent. I'm super excited. Uh, All right, so we do have our first game happening here on Cursed Hollow. We see the bans and picks coming in. What do you make of this so far? Yep, ODG has shown that uh, they do have some great map knowledge and immediately ban out Abathur. Uh, this is a map choice of TMG Red. For those who don't know, because it's new to the to the series. This is a best of two style format, so each team will play just two maps. They pick one, uh, they pick the map for one, and then they'll first pick the other one. The winner of each game gets one point, and if you get an extra point, if you dominate the entire series, or go 2-0. So you have a chance at three points here. So ODG had the first pick option. That means TMG Red picked this map as their choice. So, we have... ODG banning out Abathur on Cursed Hollow, his strongest map. Dahaka is the counter global ban by TMG Red. Then we see Garrosh picked up for ODG, which is a very, very strong hero to combine with Greymane and Falstad. What do we have for TMG Red here? All right, so for TMG Red, you've got the Uther and the ETC picked up. So, so far, a lot of focus on globals. we got two global bans, so far two global picks. We've got the Falstad on the side of ODG, the ETC potentially a global on the side of TMG Red. We'll see if they decide to go with that stage dive, but they do have that option on a map like this. Certainly it can be useful. Yeah, absolutely. ETC kind of slid out of the meta for a little while once he, his uh, trait was changed from that attack speed to the armor. He needed a couple buffs, a couple tweaks, and now he's started to reemerge as some kind of niche pick. And I especially like him with Uther because of that stacking armor. I think that's very, 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 very powerful and allows him to function more as a full tank as opposed to a little kind of squishy rock guitarist that he has been. <laughs> well, it certainly suits his frame. A uh, big Torin rocker you'd expect to be able to take a bit of a punch. Um, and it's interesting because he does have that flexibility. So depending on how the draft goes, depending on how the game goes, they can either focus on ETC being that main tank, getting off a big mosh pit in the middle of a team fight, or if they decide they need to, they can use him more as a split pusher with global presence. So we'll see how they play that. Um, second band's coming out. We've got a Rhaegar ban. That's pretty good. ODG has shown, and I think all of Nexus Gaming Series really prefers Rhaegar. Uh, I've seen a lot of really fantastic Rhaegar play in the last season, and it's always a safe ban to, uh, to bring out against almost any team. 
He's definitely been a popular pick these days, um, and I believe he even is a, a favorite for uh, Fire Team on the side of TMG Red. So he knows that hero very well. Sonya now the ban on the other side. Interesting choice there. What do you make of that? I'm interested by that because I had Jaina shown for a long time, and Jaina has been since her re rework on the rise in popularity and in win rate. She's been quite good lately, and so I'm interested to see why they chose Sonya. I can only imagine it has something to do with the solo lane, uh, because Sonya doesn't have huge strength strengths on this map compared to other maps like Braxis Holdout, which will be our game two, or Infernal Shrines, where she has some fantastic uh, shrine control. So, definitely interesting. Well, I think by the fact that they hovered the Jaina and ended up banning the Sonya, what we can tell is the main factor here is the new cool skin factor. Oh. Sonya, one of the heroes who received awesome Death Knight skins, and it could be that ODG is mainly concerned about who looks the best in this matchup. Absolutely. However, we did see the advantage go to ODG because they had the synchronized portraits, and not just any synchronized portraits, <laughs> Mr. Bigglesworth. Right now, a very interesting pickup here for TMG Red, Vala and Oriole. So going for double support, Oriole, Vala, um, this team comp is coming together in a pretty interesting way. Yeah, absolutely. The double support with Oriole and Uther has been a pretty big staple of the meta for the last couple months now. A very, very powerful combination with Uther being brought on to do most of the burst mitigation and Ariel brought on to do this area healing, especially with a good battery like Vala, Gul'dan, or a couple others since her rework. Right. Now, what do you figure ODG is thinking at this point? Obviously, they're looking for a support plus X here. Do you think they'll go double support to match or go with a different strategy? I'm pretty sure they go double tank here. Uh, if I remember correctly, that is what they like to do, and they definitely don't like Garrosh alone. Maybe a mobility mm. hero like uh, Lucio. There's your mobility hero built into support. And then Zagara for that extra global presence after level 10. I really like those pickups. Yeah, that's really interesting. We were talking about a lot of global focus and here we see it again in sort of an unconventional way with the Zagara. Um, we don't always see her picked as one of these global heroes, but certainly if she goes Nidus Network, she has that global map presence. You think she's top lane pushing you in, suddenly she's bottom lane there with the team fight. Yeah, I really like that pick, actually. The best thing you can do against double support, especially double support that lacks wave clear, is to constantly be pushing. Double support is such a good team fighting composition, especially what could be double tank double support, which is very, very common with Ariel and Uther, uh, that the best way to handle it is to do this style of Falstad, Zagara, Dahaka, Global Pressure. Uh, so I really like that pickup. I think that was a direct response pickup by ODG. All right, and Zero Tool coming in last. Now that is a bit of a uh, coming out of left field, it seems to me. That's a what fantastic. What are looking to accomplish here? That is a fantastic pickup there by TMG Red. Zero Tool is great at take at finding Falstad, at finding Zagar on their side of the map, and. Del just deleting them, getting rid of that global pressure, cleaning up the problems that they cause, and getting a counter lead for TMG Red. We will have to see how all of that goes down on the other side of the loading break. We have Season 2 of Nexus Gaming Series starting right now.
Alrighty. Over here on the left side of Cursed Hollow. In the first game of Nexus Gaming Series, Season 2. We have ODG. We have Soramir on Falstad. Calamity Cat on Lucio. Kooks on that garage. Crosby the Captain on Zagara. And Iso Sneaky on the Grey Mane. And over on the red side, we have appropriately TMG Red. Fire Team, the team captain in main shot caller on Uther. Ezreal playing Oriel. Time on Vala. Swanky going to be swankily rocking an ATC. And Shade on the very shady Zeratul. And just like that, NGS Season 2 is happening. Oh, this is fantastic. I really like the name synergy that TMG Red brought. They've got some really appropriate heroes. Shade on Zeratul. Great job. Really fantastic work there. Yeah, these teams are not just going for your typical, like, game-related strategy. This is also about confidence, and I think having a proper name with your hero adds to that. Oh, absolutely. It's an intimidation factor like no other as we see the uh, initial rotations begin. We have three heroes in the middle here for ODG with a 1-1 split on either side. Uh, we'll see Shade as Zeratul going up against Iso Sneaky on the gray main. Down in the bottom lane, we have Time and Ezreal, the battery against Crosby. All right, definitely it uh, looks like TMG Red does not want to get behind against the Cigar to start with, so they're just going for the numbers game down bottom. Yeah, it's a good way to deal with her lane pressure. Uh, she does a, if you leave Zagara to 1v1, she'll either take down your towers or take you down pretty much 100% of the time. And that's obviously very dangerous and uh, not a good advantage to have uh, against you. So, good rotations down by TMG Red to be able to take care of that. Right, it looks like they're keeping up the pressure pretty strongly there. Uh, all lanes going fairly even at the moment. Kook's down a little bit of health against Swanky. Uh, Zeratul managing to hold off Greymane in the lane. Yeah, he'll have to allow uh, a couple minions to go into the cannon towers because Iso Sneaky can do a lot of damage just from cocktails, just from uh, jumping in. Oh, time. Ooh, time. Very low. Very low down bottom. Wow. So much damage put out onto him. They got a lot of damage onto the Cigara, but the return damage onto time was almost lethal, but... He walked real... out with about Just... 25 health there. Cool. Greyman now getting a top camp in the meantime. Yep. Greyman goes ahead. With that uh, two-minute camp up in the top lane, we see all of the good teams picking up. Those camps right after two minutes, and we see Fire Team and Time doing the exact same thing. So that'll bring an important uh, kind of RNG element to this game of where the first tribute spawns. If you're playing as one team, you want the tribute to spawn farther away from those siege giants, allowing them to be able to split push for a longer amount of time. So we'll have to see how that comes up in just the next couple seconds. Right, it looks like up top they're looking for a gank onto Zeratul. Greymane, however, missed his cocktail. Did not spot him. Heroes, gather tribute and earn my favor. And the tribute is going to spawn bottom, where Team G Red has Siege Giants pushing for them. Cool. So that favors uh, ODG just a slight bit, as those uh, Siege Giants in the top lane are going to have to be taken by Zeratul. And that'll make this a... Uh, Favorable fight as time, once again, quite low on health, takes a lot of damage. Uh, Still isn't scared to go back in, whoever getting a lot of damage onto Calamity Cat and Ooh. Stormir, chasing them both away. Meanwhile, Zagara trying to sneak that curse, but Uther stops that cold. What a shame. Time almost had that kill. Good kill there by the uh, detainment strike there. By Ezreal, Ezreal with a great whip to get that kill. Yeah, fantastic there. Good slide in by Swanky. Iso Sneaky goes down as well. Nice pick up there, uh, even after the miss kill to start. Great play so far, we see from TMG Red. Up kills 2-0, getting that first tribute. Nice start from TMG Red. The XP fairly even at this point. Um, the top siege giants did manage to take out one of the towers, did a lot of damage to that gate. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, Time had a slight blunder before uh, when he got Calamity Cat down to about 50 health. He vaulted and ended up hitting Soramir with his vault-empowered arrow, and then the next arrow uh, hit Calamity Cat and lowered him to about 50 health. If that had connected, we would have seen that kill uh, get picked up. 
but alas, the small things. No doubt. All right. Well, uh, looks like the lanes are going back to their previous assignment for the most part. Greymane once again grabbing a camp by himself. See a little bit of dive onto this bottom, uh, bottom fort. Could be a little bit of a overextension here by TMG Red. Good heal by Ezreal as those level seven talents with that energized cord is picked up. We see time is loving the double supports down there. And the next tribute spawning again closer to the bottom half of the map. Yep, so second tribute as time goes in again. That's an overextension. Whoa. Ezreal is not in position uh, quite there to save him. Fire team ends up getting the call and retreating. Uh, very close there for both teams, but <laughs> it does end up favoring TMG Red. I mean, I've got to say, I love the boldness from time. Every time I think, uh, you know, he's just going to get punished, but he dashes out, gets healed just in time, ends up kind of baiting ODG. Uh, but in the end, no one dies, and TMG Red grabs the second tribute in a row. Yeah, I really appreciate the time puns right there as Calamity Cat gets down to about 300 health. Does have his amp it up and a little bit of residual fountain to make sure he doesn't die, though. But during all of that, ODG playing the strong macro game. They are ahead uh, in that middle lane, both towers down there, uh, both towers down in the top lane as well. So despite the uh, kill and bottom lane advantage for TMG Red, ODG showing a lot of power in the other lanes where the supports are not, and that's the key. Yeah, Crosby up on this Zagara here, uh, really have, is having a bit of a free lane at the moment. Zero Tool not able to hold off against that pushing power. We'll see if he can get a gank in. Gonna go for it. Ooh, the uh, Hydra the took damage the damage. Lands. That's really, really solid play right there. We do have Mosh Pit picked up for ETC, so he has not opted for more global presence. We'll have a 2-0 global game as Zagar picks up the Nidus network. All right, level 10 is happening basically at the same time. Third tribute up, and it looks like TMG Red is going to grab it. No contest. Wow. I, ODG decided to pick up the boss for that, so we'll have to see if that uh, that play works out for them. Zagar with Nidus Worm is able to handle multiple lanes at once but not with multiple heroes like they're pushing in the top lane with, so we'll have to see how that works out for ODG. <laughs> Swanky down bottom just runs past that boss to get some damage onto the towers, push those minions forward. The rest of TMG Red focusing mostly top lane. Yeah, they broke down that bottom uh, that bottom wall there and just dove right on top of Zagara, no big issue, but here comes a four-man collapse. Great gust there by Soramir to separate time away from his supports. Ezreal taking a lot of damage. D-Shield goes down on time. Now Ezreal just has to save himself. He does, and wow, what a turnaround under Curse. There goes uh, Garrosh, there goes Falstad. Iso Sneaky gonna get taken out as well under his own fort during Curse. That is a four-man kill for TMG Red. What an unbelievable teamfight turnaround on the part of TMG Red. Again, it just feels like they just keep baiting ODG. They get super low. Ezreal there was almost dead. Pops the Aegis just at the last moment. And somehow in the meantime, Time is able to take them out with his support. Um, it was interesting, before that teamfight, we saw Shade actually drop a Void Prison on all four of those members in the middle of the jungle, stalling them out. So TMG Red was aware of their presence, decided to stay there and take that fight, which I thought was going to be a mistake, but it turned out to work out great for them. Yeah, I thought that engage uh, by Falstad was really fantastic, uh, splitting up time from the supports, but it just wasn't enough. The double invulnerability and the slight miss on focus fire ended up costing ODG. So, wonder if the change in roles, change in heroes might be causing a little bit of rust, but we'll have to see as this series progresses, as a bush party is set up, and who is invited? <laughs> is Soromir invited? Oh no, it seems to be the nice Mosh Pit. Nice double power slide into a Mosh Pit, into the Reign of Vengeance, and there goes two members of ODG, just like that with a boss here. I think this is going to be a keep. Oh, absolutely. Great job. Swanky just ends up pulling them in right as ODG is looking to defend the boss, gets a nice three-man Mosh, prevents the gust, and uh, gives them a nice 5v3 advantage for this uh, boss to push onto the keep. The Soromir has to blow Gust to keep himself alive. Well, 
ODG does have a, uh, some uh, camps pushing mid. We'll see if that's any kind of consolation here. All five of them are up now. We'll see if TMG Red can cleanly get out of here or if they decide to turn things around once again. Ding down. And they do. Yeah. I'm surprised ODG is pushing this far uh, in while being down three levels and inherently a talent tier with that, the level 13 talent tier. Uh, that's that's a risky move when they've been getting beat in teamfight all game, down 9-0 to zero in kills. That's got to hurt. Uh, in the meantime, the global presence of Zagara is helping a little bit. She managed to get some push down in the bottom lane. Where the curse is going to be. This game is not over yet, but certainly Team G Red is coming out of the gate swinging. Oh, this has been a fantastic performance so far for the HGC Open Hopefuls. Uh, if they play like this, I think they can absolutely uh, have a great time here, both in the Nexus Gaming Series and try and get that goal of top eight in the uh, HGC Open as the fourth tribute and first for the second curse goes over to TMG Red. Yeah, Ezreal sneaking that turn in the uh, Zagara spell just missing by a hair. Ooh. So close to getting that pause uh, and the interrupt, but instead, level 16s now will be picked up for TMG Red, that very critical talent tier. Showstopper on ETC, you get Benediction, so powerful on Uther. Uh, Sentence to Death is Zeratul's huge power spike, uh, and then Rewind absolutely on 20, along with Reservoir of Hope and the Frost Shot, so full multi shot build here for Vala. TMG Red now taking their advantage, pushing it into the mid lane, looking to at least take down that fort. We'll see if they can push it into the keep towers. Looks like they're going to just disengage for now. It's interesting. Interesting. They don't want to take their fight, even though they're up level 16 right now. Not going to force anything until basically a tribute comes up. They might just be able to take it for free. No real risk uh, being taken, so seems good. So you can see that tribute okay. will spawn down bottom as the bottom boss spawns. Along with camps getting picked up for both teams. Here comes a gank up onto Shade. Will they have their first pick of the game? Oh. Zeratul's Void Prison says nope. <laughs> oh, that's so frustrating. Oh, I can I can just imagine. So close. Swanky ends up interrupting Crosby on the Zagara. Uh, even the stun onto the Roach to get it out faster. Fifth Curse goes over to the side of TMG Red as Ezreal starts up the boss. TMG Red starting that boss bottom. Looks like ODG is deciding to keep this push top going. And no, they abandoned that. And now they're coming back around. But we'll see what they can do. This there's, boss is taking some time to get down. Yeah, there's two supports here in an ETC. That does not burn a boss quickly. The only thing they have going for them is that they're level 17 already at 13 minutes in. We'll have to see how this fight goes as Lucio speed boosts in. Swanky takes a lot of damage along with Crosby. Mosh gets holy cowed. Sormir's Gus completely burned. Iso sneaky in a ton of trouble as well. Boss now goes down. That's going to be in the great favor of TMG Red as the health bars on ODG are so low. Three heroes getting taken out. Well, uh, Calamity Cat did get a kill onto Shade. Uh, small consolation in that scenario, as now there is a boss pushing down uh, bottom lane along with a bunch of camps, along with a bunch of minions, along with most of TMG Red. We'll see what they can get out of this. Yeah, and after the boss, there's a curse to take. We'll have to see if uh, Zagara wants to respawn, go pick up that curse to alleviate some of the bleeding. If they can survive this boss siege camp four-man push from TMG Red as the keep goes down, even though the boss is still well over 75% health. See a little All bit right, of... the boss is now on the course. Swanky gets a power slide in onto two. Everybody going in for this team fight right now. A little bit of a disengage on the part of TNG Red. Core's starting... Rain and goes in onto time. Rain of Vengeance saves the life of Oriel. Heal back up again. They just cannot get the kill. Oh, boss does go down. Core's at 90% health, but it looks like there's a disengage, at least for now. Here comes a curse picked up by Zeratul. Swanky in a lot of trouble. We'll be taking out Ezreal. Also, probably going to be caught out here unless he can meet up with some of the supports. 
Divine Shield may not be enough as that Lucio speed boost is going to keep uh, the entire team of ODG on top of Ezreal. Let's see if they can continue for more. Fire team gets a uh, hit, but not the flip. Ends up uh, with a minion, but back at home, ODG has to do a lot of janitor work. Health of their core down to 67%. What a combo from Shade. Meanwhile, Shade is just fighting people right against the core here. He might pay for it. He does. He goes down. To oh! Time, time, time and fire team now on their own. Looks like they're just trying to finish this off, but I don't know if they can do it. I don't know. It's going to be tough. They're focusing the core, and with three catapults, now four in the top lane, the core goes down to 8% health, coming down even further. That is game. Game one goes over to the side of TMG Red. What a fantastic first game of this series. TMG Red came out swinging, dominating that match most of the time. However, the funny thing is they ended the game with all of them dead. That is quite strange. That was five of the six kills uh, for ODG, <laughs> but they did just enough damage before the end of that game to, uh, to get that core knocked out. So great calculation there on the side of TMG Red. Yeah, they played a phenomenal game. The team fighting from them was very on point, um, and the macro play seemed great. Sending Zeratul away to get that last curse uh, at the end there really just put the nail in the coffin of ODG. Even though they got a bunch of kills at the end, they just were too far behind in the pressure game, and so much stuff was coming at their core, they just weren't able to stop it in time, although it was a bit of a nail-biter. Yeah, that was a close core call, but it did end up working. So, again, really, really solid play. We're going to move into game two on Braxis Holdout. Uh, this was a map choice of uh, ODG. So we'll have to see what kind of plans they have for this map. For those new, I also want to direct you to the uh, overlay here in the center. Uh, we have ODG here in blue on the left. We have over here on the right, we have TMG Red, and in the middle we have the map tracker overlay. So we can see Infernal Shrines banned out by ODG. We have Dragonshire banned out by TMG Red. The first map was Cursed Hollow. Second map is Braxis Holda, and the red uh, hexagon around the Cursed Hollow indicates that TMG Red has won the first game and we'll be looking for that domination victory here on Braxis. Right, so definitely that's going to boost their spirits as a very new team to come in with the win straight off the bat. We'll see whether ODG, as sort of a veteran team, has the uh, strength of will to come back from that and not get too down after that sound thrashing. Cool. Well, we're going to go ahead and get right on into this game two. Uh, actually, you're not in this game. <laughs> I'm not in the game let's, just yet. Let's invite him. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. All righty. Let's start this up. All righty. Welcome to game two of Nexus Gaming Series. Season two Division A matchup between ODG and Team Red. The first game we saw on Cursed Hollow was a sound, uh, just, well, as we said just a minute ago, sound thrashing by TMG Red. What did you think of that first game there, Bludgeon? Well, it was a really exciting first game for one thing. Uh, these teams definitely did not want to bore any of our new NGS viewers here, and they certainly did not bore me. I was entertained the whole way through. Um, some really interesting calls in that game. I think for me the most interesting one was that team fight up top where we saw that great turn from TMG Red as the four members of OEG came up to catch them at their fort. And we'd seen previously Zeratul um, knew those members were there because he put them all in a void prison. So it was a very interesting game of knowledge and kind of chicken in a way because everyone knew where everyone was and they all opted into the fight. Uh, it just happened to go TMG Red's way. Um, so here we are on Braxis holdout. We see a first ban onto Garrosh. Yeah, even though he didn't work all that well for ODG last game, we didn't see a lot of picks, actually any picks really. Uh, Garrosh is a lot stronger here on Braxis Holdout. You're kind of forced into this certain laning setup, and the, lo the just general space of the map is a lot smaller. 
And so you can end up getting those just incidental with enough tries, Q flips over the entire team. And that can cause a lot of issues and cause Braxos a very draft dependent and almost snowball style map to get a little bit out of hand. So I like the ban from TMG Red. Right, and we see the Oriole ban over there on the part of ODG. They obviously did not enjoy having to put up with that in game number one. Yeah, for the same reason, Ariel works really, really well on Braxis Holdout because you've got this four-man group that you can constantly keep up with Manaless Sustain, which is some of the most powerful sustain you can possibly bring to a four-man group. So, in addition, you also have the threat of Cho'Gal on Braxis. <laughs> I know that's a Korean meta-style thing, but it's happened. Uh, I've heard the rumors of Div A games from last season, and we had it pulled on us last season which did not feel good. But. Yeah, well, I've seen it work for sure. Definitely, I watched some European Open games, and uh, Real Cho'Gal was something that came out quite a bit to devastating effect. Uh, the Uther picked up once again for Team Dread, obviously comfortable with that hero. On the other side now, two new picks in the part of Genji and Rhaegar, which was banned against them last time. Yeah, uh, Rhaegar just, again, a really solid support overall. Does well. In pretty much every scenario, uh, maybe not as niche, not as he's more of a general support, as opposed to where you can pick that one support that works perfect for your composition. Uh, he won't bring that most of the time, but nonetheless, a good healer indeed. And Genji, I want to talk about because Genji is really interesting on Braxis because of his long dash and his trait to flip over walls. He can function as a pseudo global on this map where you get on one of the buttons, dash to the middle, and flip over the wall to the other button and be able to c create nearly instant rotations every 15 seconds. It's a fantastic pickup for ODG. Now that is very interesting. We'll see who ends up playing it. I believe it will probably be uh, Soromir on that Genji. However, we'll see. The ETC again picked up on the part of TMG Red, so it looks like they're going for consistency here. Things that worked in the first game, they're not ready to abandon just yet. The Grey Mane, uh, new for them here, taking the place of that Vala, perhaps. Seems reasonable. They fill similar roles, and with Ariel gone, Grey Mane can kind of stand alone a little bit better. He can stack his cocktails at 7 really effectively. Uh, he's incredibly popular right now in all of Nexus Gaming Series. We saw him not picked up once in the, entitle, in the entire final series. Of all three divisions, that's 13 games he was, had popularity of 12 out of 13 games, either picked or banned. So, incredibly <laughs> strong and popular hero right now. We saw the Stukov ban. It does look like ODG is focused on the supports. Uh, Stukov, obviously, very strong on a map with these very concentrated points here. Uh, but getting that big silence over that whole area can really take control. So, they do not want to go against that. The Lunara ban on the other side, what do you make of that? Lunara's just good poke. Now, with Ariel out, uh, Lunara loses a little bit of threat, but I think it's still a good ban. It indicates to me that they might want to go solo heal Uther here. I think the biggest threat to Uther solo healing is large amounts of damage spread out around the team. Kind of the opposite of what uh, Stukov would want to have. Stukov wants that spread out damage. Uther can only burst heal and in very, very long cooldowns. Lunara is the exact counter to that, and we've seen several games where a solo heal Uther just cannot compete with the amount of damage that Lunara can put out across the entire team. And we see the Muradin and Kael'thas pick up for ODG. Uh, Kael'thas on this map, obviously, uh, again, that area control, people bunched up into small spaces, makes for uh, the empowered... Flame strike that makes that certainly very annoying. Mm -hmm. um, Muradin, uh, frontline hero, pretty strong all around frontline hero, able to get in there, get in people's way, mess people up. Uh, peel for the Kael'thas as well if the Grey Mane comes in. Yeah, uh, Muradin's just a sturdy, good tank that they can pick pretty much with anybody else. And what they've done is they've saved their solo laner likely for last. None of these heroes really solo lane that well, and by saving him for last, oh. I like this. By saving the solo laner for last, you can essentially see the entire team that TMG Red has built, and then they go ahead and pick the best counter to, say, a Sonya. And so they'll get that option. They have uh, 
the option of picking somebody really niche like Butcher, who does well against Sonya. Uh, <laughs> New Leoric is very, very strong as well. So we'll have to see what ODG does. Now, the Zarya pickup, that's not something I have been seeing all that much lately. What do you think is motivating that choice? I love Zarya. One of my heroes I've got mastered uh, in the strange pool of heroes that I have. Uh, really a fantastic pickup for Braxis Holdout. This is her strongest map. Uh, there's not a lot of crowd control on the side of ODG. There is some. You've got the Murden Stormbolt, Kael'thas Gravity Lapse, but not oppressive amounts. Leoric pickup. Good call there. Uh, Very good call. Appreciate it. Zarya uh, sieges really, really well, and she's the best early game hero. So if you can take your power four heroes, your Greymane, ETC, Uther, Zarya, you can, and be able to put so much pressure on that uh, 4v4 lane, you'll be able to convert that into huge amounts of structure damage with Feel the Heat on one, and really start that snowball process. And Zarya, as the best early game hero, brings that like nobody else. We will have to see, though, all of this on the other side of the loading break. We will be right back in just a few seconds, as soon as this toaster's ding. All right, Ezreal's toaster has dinged, and here we are on Braxis holdout. This is ODG on the blue team on the left side. Division A, Next Gaming Series, Season 2, all of the titles that need to be said. But here we have Crosby, the captain on Kael'thas Calamity Cat, on Rhaegar Kooks, on Muradin this time, Iso Sneaky on the very critical Genji, and Sormir on the Leoric. And over on the red side, we have TMG Red. Team Captain Fire Team will be playing Uther, Shade on Sonya, Ezreal on Zarya, Swanky on ETC, and Time on Greymane. Oh, I'm I'm really excited to see how TMG Red plays this out. See if they're uh, going to continue their dominance, or how they're going to uh, what they're going to do to leverage this Zarya advantage as a Zarya enthusiast myself in both Heroes and Overwatch. Ezreal switched over from the, that second support Ariel to uh, Zarya this game, so that's an interesting switch, as well as time staying on the uh, staying on that range damage and Shade going from Zeratul up to Sonya in the top lane as there seems to be a little bit of a gank set up for her. Yeah, they waited there for a while, hoping to get that gank onto Shade, but just were not quite able to do it. Meanwhile, down bottom, uh, Team Dread putting a lot of pressure against ODG, already getting a turret down. Yep, full energy Zarya, feel the heat on level 1. You will rip through those buildings like no other. It's such a powerful combination, and I can absolutely see why they picked it up. And that gank, uh, because they are able to apply so much pressure in the bottom lane, uh, TMG Red was able to call out their only two heroes down here in the bottom lane. They must be up for a gank in the top. And so Sonya was very aware not to step out. Now, up top, we've got the Sonya versus the Leoric. How do you see this matchup going so far? At the moment, uh, both of them down about half. 
no real advantage in terms of wave clear so far. How will this progress throughout the game? Let me get back to that as soon as Crosby ends up falling oh. down in the bottom lane. The dive from uh, Iso Sneaky and Kooks. Wow. Look at time go in a little bit deep. You are not Vala this game, and you do not have double support. You've been taken out. Swanky a little bit too aggressive as well. He gets taken out. Little bit overconfidence there, it looks like, from TMG Red. TMG Red maybe has a little much of that adrenaline still pumping through their veins, and they felt like they were immortal, and ODG says, you are not. Yeah. They were, they were punished, uh, time, punished by, uh, diving in a little bit too far, did not have the return dive, uh, shields were down for Ezreal, so, cost them, uh, two kills there, and the, uh, XP tie, so. ODG getting a little bit of beacon progress, now they're fighting over the one down bottom, ISO Sneaky getting in there with Genji, Wanky soaking up a lot of damage, having to power slide out before he takes too much. Uh, but ODG does get control of both beacons, and Ezreal, who just barely getting out of that one. Yeah, good, uh, good engagement there by ODG, showing a lot more, uh, just patience, poise, a little bit, uh, cleaner than the last fight, or the last game, rather. I think it's gonna come out to work for them, even though, uh, ISO Sneaky now had to rotate out, and TMG Red builds beacon progress. Right, Sonia was able to push that Leoric off that top beacon at the same time as his, the rest of his teammates were able to get at the one down bottom. Progress now evening out. We'll see whether or not Genji and Leoric can push Sonia off that top one in time to do anything. Yeah, I believe uh, Leoric in his new state, I haven't played him uh, all that much, but he has some fantastic wave clear. But I believe his uh, sustain in 1v1 has been hampered just a little bit, and it seems like that's the case because he keeps getting forced off the button, and especially when he misses the Spooky Hand uh, ability. Well, the fighting over these beacons is very even so far. It's very back and forth. Uh, Kooks right in the middle getting a lot of nice stun onto time. However, no damage follow-up. Swanky power slides in, scaring people away. Ooh. Health bar is so low for ODG now. Rhaegar is just having a little bit of trouble keeping the health bars up. Uh, Swanky's uh, prog rock not completed. Did he? He didn't even take it. He took block party. Uh, so he'll be applying those blocks for the rest of his team, giving his whole team a little bit more sustain, along with the Ezreal uh, shields, along with the fire team heals. Gives just a little bit more sustain advantage to TMG Red, and we can see that working out for them as they continue controlling that bottom button. Yeah, we saw that ODG, uh, while they do put up a good fight, eventually their health bars were just too low and they all had to back out. However, uh, Leoric did manage to keep control of that top beacon for the most part, getting Shade down very low. We'll see if they can get the kill as Iso Sneaky now joins up. Oh, for sure. There goes... Man. There goes... Shade so, drops. Yeah, great, great rotation up. And look, watch Genji here. We'll watch him. He should be able to dash through the middle if he wants to use those cooldowns. Uh, might want to keep him for some kind of in-fight or in-combat action, so won't want to burn him yet. But he is able to make those very quick rotations. Ezreal takes a good bit of damage. Swanky with a nice group power slide. Crosby caught out again. He goes down. Great stun by Fireteam to take out Oop, uh, Kooks. Mid jump brings him right back down to earth with the Hammer of Justice. All right. Well, the kills are even 3-3. Three, three. The experience is just about even at 7-7. Seven, seven. Structures also, well, they were even, but now TMG Red getting a nice push in. Uh, beacon progress definitely in the favor of ODG at this point. Yeah, but Swarmir is going to have to back off this uh, top button unless Iso Sneaky comes in. Pulls Shade, and Shade's going to go down again. These are the global style rotations that ODG needs to at least not die to a Zerg wave, which will be pushing in that already weakened bottom fort, regardless of if they take uh, any more progress on it or not. And down bottom looks like ODG is trying to get some kills as TMG is on the escape. Nice damage going down. EDC pushed them away, but Stormier now coming in from the top. It's a 5v4. Health bars are very low. Time is about to drop. And he does. Well, you could say his time ran out. 
you could say that. But I'm just a terrible pun person when it, <laughs> when it comes to it. We all have to do it. Uh, yeah, ha when you have a name like Time, I mean, it's just gonna happen. I know. Why isn't he playing Chromie? Come on now, continuity here. All right, we'll see. Uh, Iso Sneaky and Soromir run back up, try and see what they can do against Shade here in the top lane. However, there's uh, nothing really for Shade to be defending other than the capture of the button. But they already have the bottom button for now. Oh no, they don't. They actually uh. Don't Kook stands on the button just long enough for ODG to end up getting that 100 to 52% Zerg wave uh, pushing along that top lane. All right, so we have seen the uh, Leoric and uh, Genji team up killing Shade a couple of times now. It's got to feel good after they just couldn't get him on zero to the last game. Yeah, they've done a really good job at that. I really like the way they've played that out. Uh, but they're going to end up having to def uh, choosing to defend. Trying to take a little bit of, of advantage in this 4v3 fight, but they did it under a Zerg wave, and those Zerg hurt. You can ask any Terran or Protoss. The Zergs are vicious, and uh, <laughs> that is uh, a lot of damage put out onto Iso Sneaky and Kooks. Yeah, they really got chased away there. A lot of damage going down onto them, and now we've got a uh, four-man push on the part of TMG Red. We'll see what they can get accomplished down here. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, Guardian's about to be taken out, so that 100% Zerg wave being cleaned up about the same time as the uh, assisted 50% Zerg wave. No real structure damage has been dealt. There goes the 10's Mosh Pit picked up, blocking everybody from getting back in. There's the expulsion to further amplify the situation. Great fight, but nobody's gone down yet, and all of a sudden, huh. wow, three players of TMG Red just evaporate at the cost of just a Genji life. Yeah, time comes in, has a look at what's going on, and says, yeah, not this. Yeah, I can't believe that fight turned around with how well it started out for TMG Red. They got the mosh pit. They, ODG couldn't interrupt it. Uh, then the expulsion was dropped, so ODG further couldn't retreat. But it didn't matter. The 5v4 ended up resulting in three kills for ODG and a map control advantage. It was a very bold initiation from the ETC. As soon as level 10, he dashed in, got that power slide right in front of the gates, like you're saying. However, Kael'thas was able to get an insane amount of damage as everyone was grouped up right in front of their towers. And I think that was the difference. Yep. Kael'thas with that Sun King's Fury. Uh, once you get one bomb spread, the others are going to do a ton of damage. Additionally, 10s were picked up just after so that, uh, Phoenix was able to do additional damage along with the X-Strike and March of the Black King, which I didn't see how effective it was in that fight, but I know it's become the preferred ultimate due to the Entomb changes. All right, well, we've definitely got some fighting happening up top. Teams shooting at each other back and forth. Kook's taking a big amount of damage from that Curse Bullet as Shade comes in from the bottom looking for a flank, missing that hook. And we'll see what happens. Swanky swings in and misses. Yep, no engagement by Leap there either uh, with the rest of the cooldowns for TMG Red. A little bit down. I'm looking for this Leap-Divine Storm combination, though. That is a ton of area crowd control uh, for a significant amount of time, and I'm really excited to see that combo go off. If they can land it, but I want to see ODG be able to do something about it, too. Ooh. Yeah, now we saw Kooks having to come down and clear out these minion wave bottom. Uh, Shade jumping straight in, getting a kill onto Sormir. Crosby now about to go down. Oh. Ancestral That's just a two off. For zero. Yep. That pressure afforded by the Bruiser camp in the bottom lane allowed the 5v4 collapse by TMG Red when they saw uh, Kooks on Murden go down and take care of that wave. So great uh, timing right there by TMG Red to take their advantage, which was very short, only a couple of seconds. They're able to turn it into two kills. Well done. And now they're turning it into some structures up top. Meanwhile, actually, ODG is catching some beacons here, but Sormir drops yet again. Yep, Mosh ended up getting used, uh, but ultimately resulted in no effect. Uh, Sormir was going to go down without the Mosh, and the Cleanse was used by the Calamity Cat to get Kooks out of the Mosh, where I think they were trying to get the extra value from. So... Good, there. Good job there by Calamity Cat, and if you gotta lose somebody, lose Leork. It's the best one. 
Yeah, he's back up already right in the middle of the fight. And the amazing thing is, while that was going on, we've got 56 to 0% beacon progress in the favor of ODG. Yeah, TMG Red uh, opted to take the team fight, which is fine. But they didn't take full control of the beacons. And ISO Sneaky, well, let's, let's do it again. Snuck down to the bottom lane, <laughs> and he went ahead and started filling up the uh, pen with Zerg in the bottom lane. Phoenix goes down. Ooh, here comes the group on a shade. Uh, however, gravity laps just a hair late, and it ends up uh, missing, so Shade's able to escape pretty much at full health as the posturing continues. Definitely a bit of a different flavor this game. It's not a one-sided game by any means. Still very even. Uh, structure is in the favor of, well, TMG Red, I suppose, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four to three, but kills, unlike last time, in a major way, ODG actually leads in kills eight to seven right now, but is down about a half level because of that structure advantage. All right, we see TMG Red now swooping up around bottom. They've caught Stormier and Iso sneaky, but the rest of the team is not far behind. We'll see who actually has caught whom here as the team fight breaks out. Koos is going to end up taking all the damage in the world. Ancestral comes in a little bit late. Mosh is up in five seconds. See if they can, if they want to turn around on this. Cast a Mosh. Here comes a power slide. Nope. Doesn't decide to. Iso sneaky tries to get a little bit of damage on time. Here comes the Mosh. Three oh, players nice get caught in. Bit. Very good job there. There goes Crosby. There goes Iso Sneaky. March of the Black King does a lot of damage. Keeps uh, the Soromir alive. But uh, doesn't end up finishing off any kills there. As the beacons are now filling for TMG Red. Yeah, TMG Red learning from their last team fight mistake there. Making sure to grab that beacon before they committed to the team fight. So that either way, they at least made sure they were getting some progress. They ended up winning the team fight as well. Things have definitely swung back into their favor as we see a one level lead for TMG Red. And the Zergs are spawning. Yep, and they're going to go up probably level 16 once they take down this uh, top fort. So that's going to put a huge amount of pressure onto ODG to be able to defend this properly. Uh, if not when this fort goes down, definitely when the first towers go down here on this keep wall. So really going to be tough for ODG to defend this push yet again. Yeah, Crosby taking some nice poke damage in the back there. He's getting as much as he can onto the Zerkway, but ODG really just has to kind of back away in the face of all this red stuff coming at them. Yeah, without the full, uh, without the flame strike build, Crosby's going to be a little bit weak to, uh, to clearing out these Zerg waves as the bombs don't spread nearly as well as the flame strike steel damage. As that top keep goes down, and TMG is pretty happy with that, they'll take this tower and say, thank you very much, we've taken our leave now. Yeah, they definitely got a lot done there, and the blue Zerg wave, meanwhile, is uh, kind of lazily worked its way toward that bottom keep wall. We'll see if it gets too much done before uh, TMG Red deals with it. Uh, I think TMG Red wanted that Zerg wave to be cleaned up already, but there are there is a Guardian here. There are several Ultra. Uh, there's an Ultralisk, a Hydralisk. Those aren't going to get cleaned out very quickly until they get to a wall, and even then, the Guardian will never be picked off because it has longer than that siege range. Uh, so they do have to clean it up instead of doing something like taking the boss. Right. In the end, they don't really lose too much down there. Nice damage onto that uh, wall, but it looks like a lot of people are grouping up now. What a fight. Look at that March of the Black King healing. He healed a third of his health bar twice, but the third hit didn't quite give him enough healing to be able to Wraith walk away. Wrath walk away. I forget which one it is. Uh, that is Wraith walk. walk yeah. It is. It is. Uh, he's not wrathfully walking away. That is, <laughs> albeit humorous, is not accurate. Well, TMG Red has got their eye on this bottom keep, but they do not have any minions support yet. If they can hold on long enough, they do have minions along with mercs coming up to support them. we we'll see if they wait for it or if they go all in. Yeah, the, that uh, Hellback camp isn't going to push extremely quickly, but it does have a lot of health as it starts marching up. Uh, but their opportunity window is closing. Uh, 16's about to be picked up for ODG, possibly as soon as this minion wave goes down. And that'll even up this fight of just basically make this an even fight and even in the favor of ODG with the defensive position. 
And it looks like TMG Red is now going to try to back out. Uh, as I say, that Swanky goes back in, gets a mosh pit onto a couple people. Kooks very low in the back, has to get out. Yep, Kooks bails out. Iso Sneaky ends up taking the death. Uh, expulsion lands, but Crosby solo down to single digits. Face melt literally melts his face off and gets the kill. As uh, Ezreal is low, but Kooks is lower along with Soromir. Four kills for the side of TMG Red off the counter engage, and this could be game as Core gets down lower and lower. All right, well, just like that, TMG Red is beating down the Core. Calamity Cat, eh, running away from a distance, <laughs> gets killed by a tank. And that's the series going over to TMG Red with a 2-0 victory over ODG. Really fantastic performance there by TMG Red. Uh, taking down a long-standing uh, member of Division A, taking that domination victory, going up three points early uh, in this six-week season. Really, really well done by TMG Red. Yeah, and I've got to say, well played by ODG as well. There were definitely a lot of po points in that game where it felt like they had the upper hand and they had sort of found their groove, uh, but it came down to a few moments where TMG Red was just too strong and flipped the script on them. Yep, that did seem uh, seem to be the case. They had some really solid ideas, even some solid plays, but it ended up just not working out for them. Uh, so we'll have to see if they can make some kind of comeback soon. And as we said, for both of these teams, this is really their first match with their current rosters. So we'll see how ODG develops with the not only two new players, but two new roles as well. Crosby, uh, I believe, was their support player. This time he's gone uh, playing more of a uh, damage role. So it might take them some time to kind of figure out uh, their current lineup. And I'm excited to see where they go from here. Yes, indeed. Well, all right. Thank you very much for watching this inaugural series of Next Gaming Series Season 2. Thank you very much for joining me, Bludgeon. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Seventh Ace. Looking forward to the rest of this season. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you can find me here, twitch.tv slash Seventh Ace. Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me, twitch.tv slash Bludgeon TV. All right. Check him out. He'll be doing some additional casting for the league uh, very, very shortly once we get everybody hooked up with all the sweet streaming gear that you see here. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you in another...